Hi! In this lesson, we'll learn a few different types of authentication methods that are used to ensure that the person trying to view the information is authorized to do so. We've learned that keys are used in encryption to encrypt and decrypt information. In symmetric encryption, a single key is used, and in asymmetric encryption, a pair of keys is used. Symmetric encryption is very risky because if someone intercepts your key, then they can access your information. Asymmetric encryption is stronger because there is a public key and a private key. No one knows your private key, but the public key used is just that, public. So how can you be sure that the public key you are using is the right one and not someone trying to access your information? You might remember learning about websites and using HTTPS. When the website begins with HTTPS, this means your connection to that site is encrypted. Any information you send or receive on that site is also encrypted. The encryption typically uses a public key and a private key. So when we visit websites that start with HTTPS, there's an additional level of security called a digital certificate. A digital certificate is binded to a public key. You can think of this certificate as a virtual ID card for a website. A digital certificate is a small data file that digitally binds a public key to an organization. So just as you would show your ID to prove who you are, a website shows its digital certificate to a certificate authority who validates the public key. The role of this certificate authority is to make sure the site is legitimate. If it is, then the site will be issued a certificate. Certificate authorities are also responsible for authenticating or checking certificates and maintaining status information, such as when the certificate expires. You can check any website certificate. The specific process to do this varies by browser. Browsers check sites for valid security certificates automatically. Security certificates are used to verify that a site can be trusted. A valid certificate verifies that the website will pose no security threat, and then the website will be displayed by your browser. An invalid certificate will cause your browser to send you an alert. There are a few reasons why your certificate may cause a concern. It could be expired or revoked. It could be unknown or possibly fraudulent. In any of these cases, the site cannot be trusted. Now you can bypass an invalid certificate alert, but it's taking a big risk and is really not recommended. After a certificate expires, it needs to be renewed. This is similar to how your driver's license or passport needs to be renewed periodically. Renewing ensures that the certificate is up to date and the identity and the legitimacy is rechecked every so often. If you see a notification such as this one, don't visit the site. Cybercriminals can take advantage of expired certificates and gain information from the site's users. A revoked certificate should raise an even bigger red flag. Revoking a certificate is when a previously signed certificate is invalidated and can no longer be used for authentication purposes. Now, some reasons this might happen could be that the private key has been lost, stolen, or compromised, the domain name has been changed, or the website is no longer in service. Also, if the site fails to follow policy or the certificate authority has been compromised, then the certificate could be revoked. The main reason why a digital certificate is used is to keep sensitive information encrypted so that only the intended receiver can access it. It's critical that any site that stores or displays confidential information needs a digital certificate. This includes sites that require a login and a password and any site that stores financial information or personal data. Legal documents and medical records also need to be encrypted and protected. Speaking of sensitive information, well, how can we be sure that a website stores our information in a secure manner? Are there databases out there on the web that have our information in it? What's stopping a cyber criminal from trying to access this information? A type of cryptography called hashing is commonly used to protect stored passwords and sensitive information. Encryption techniques can be used to solely authenticate the user. Now, what this means is that the information isn't ever decrypted. In fact, it can't be decrypted. Instead, it's just checked to make sure the user is authorized to view the information. The word hashing literally means to scramble. Now in cooking, hash is a dish consisting of diced or chopped meat, potatoes, and spices that are all mixed together and then cooked. You cook everything up together in one dish. 
However, there's no way you could take that dish and go back to the uncooked ingredients, right? Another analogy is making a smoothie. You can add many ingredients into a blender and mix them into a smoothie, but there's no way to unmix back to the original ingredients. In cryptography, hashing changes a message into an unreadable string of text for the purpose of verifying the information. There's no key involved like with symmetric or asymmetric cryptography. Good cryptographic hashing is just like making a smoothie. It's nearly impossible to reverse back to the original input. Unlike symmetric and asymmetric algorithms, there are no keys in hash functions. For example, when a password is created, it is first hashed or scrambled, and then it's stored in the database as unreadable text. When a user tries to log in with the password, their input is hashed using the same algorithm. This results in a hash or scrambled string of unreadable text. Then the attempted password hash is compared with the one that's stored. And if they match, then the user is granted access. This way, the actual password is never stored in the database. Storing the passwords as plain text would leave the database open to a cyber attack. Cryptographic hash functions are also used for file downloads, digital signatures, online shopping, and cryptocurrency. All right, now it's your turn to explore these concepts.